This is unit three, part B, sinusoidal functions. So first of all, we're going to be noticing that we're going to have something in degrees and something in radians. So what the hay bales is degrees and radians. We've been dealing with degrees for years. Degrees basically go around a circle. So we're going to say zero is right here. And if we go around our circle counterclockwise, we're going to notice we end up back at 360. We do not have to understand the unit circle unless for the simple fact that we need to understand what a radian is, okay? Now, a radian, how are degrees and radians related? Well, if you see something with a degree symbol, it's going to be in degrees. If you don't see a degree symbol and you see numbers that are smaller than 100, 90% of the time, you're going to be dealing with radians, okay? Actually, numbers smaller than 30 even. Now, why is that? Well, radians deal with pi. And what do we know pi is for a digit? Well, if we were to round the digit, it's 3.14. So if I say it's 3.14, what they're basically telling us, is how far is it to get around the whole circle? Well, they're telling us that half of a circle, 180, is exactly equal to pi. So they're saying half of a circle is going to be equal to 3.14 steps, okay? So, how is that in comparison? Well, we know that half of a circle is 180. Well, that means 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Okay, pi rad. Rad is the short form for radians. You could have a little baby r as well. So, what do you think then 2 pi is equal to? What do you think 2 pi is equal to is 1 pi is equal to 180? 360, double it. So we're basically talking about how far is something traveling. Everything we're going to be dealing with is circular. So we're going to be dealing with water wheels. We're going to be dealing with um, wave patterns. Wave patterns like electricity, okay? Those types of things. Yes. That comes from Yes, yes it does. That's with the unit circle, actually. And we don't go into detail on our unit circle. So all we've literally got to understand that one radian, whoa, didn't mean to do that. That one radian is equal to 180 degrees. We're just trying to talk about how far they travel, okay? So we're trying to estimate. So we're either going to have a domain, let's look at our domain here in blue. We're going to have a domain that goes to 360, or we're going to have a domain that goes to 2 pi. Well, if a domain goes to 2 pi, that means it's going to 6.28. Well, if you notice, 6.28 is a lot smaller than 360. So they use pi radians in order to deal with numbers that are a lot smaller. Okay? And again, it deals with the radians in the unit circle, and it does deal with radius. Now, how far do they go? Basically, what they say is this. Um, one radian is equal to about 60 degrees. Well, and that's, I'm going to put a little about sign. Okay, a little squiggle equal sign means about. So it's about 60 degrees. Well, if I take a look at how far I've traveled, if I go from here to here, 60 degrees, that's a third of, the, of going halfway. Okay, does that make sense? It's a third of the way going to 180, okay? Because it takes three 60 degrees to make 180, okay? So I have a portion of 60 there, so that's about one radian. And then I've got another 60 degrees right here, okay? 60 going to 120, that would be this shaded section right here, okay? There's my other 60 degrees. Then I've got another 60 degrees right here. So I've got three sections of 60 degrees. So that's roughly three radians. Well, they're saying that 180 is roughly to, is roughly pi radians. Well, pi is 3.14. So if we say that we have three 60 degrees, that's the same as saying roughly three. Okay? Well, roughly three is almost the same as saying pi. 
right, it's the 180 degrees that we're comparing to, okay? Uh, 360, yes. Yes, there'll be six, 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 yes. Okay. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the next one. So, if I actually look at a picture, we always start in our graphing mode. When we graph things, we're starting in our positive quadrant. So, everything starts in our positive quadrant. So, that means this is zero right there. So that means if I'm taking and I'm going this far, I want to know in radians how far that goes. Well, we know that if I go halfway, we just discussed that halfway is pi, which is 314. Okay? So that's how far it went. And now if I'm looking at my possible answers, well, is my answer down here going to be bigger or smaller than 314? Have I traveled further than that, or have I traveled less than that? I've traveled further, because I've gone all this way, and now I'm traveling further past. So that means the number's going to be bigger than 3.14. So that means I can take off the first two answers right away. Okay? Now, we need to estimate whereabouts everything is. So, if 3.14 is there... And 6.28 is here, 0 and 6.28. Why would I say 6.28? It's too high. But if we take a look, the reason is because half is up here, the other half is on the bottom. So if I've got half of it equal to pi, the other half is going to also be pi. So a full circle would be 2 pi. Okay? So now when I take a look at it, this guy over here is 2 pi, and then this guy here is pi. Well, if I want to figure out the distance halfway between 628 and 314, I want to find out halfway. How far is halfway? How would you know? There's a strategy. What would you do? Well, let's just say, let's work backwards. I want to find 90. Here's 90 right up here. If I want to find 90, how do I find 90 if I know that all the way across is 314? How would I find halfway? Divide this guy by 2. So that's why it's called pi over 2 is 90. Now what's 3.14 3 divided by 2? Is it 1.7 something? 1.57? Okay. So if that's 1.57, we know 90 degrees then. 90 degrees is around 1.57. So if that's true, and I'm moving, and I want to find this one right here, the 270 mark, because this would be 180 over here. That's 90 up here, and this is going to be 270 degrees. I want to find out what this one is down here. How would I find out what 270 is? I would take my 314, and I'd add another 90 to it. Well, what's adding another 90 to 314? I'd add my 157, because you're adding 90 degrees. Okay? Let's take a look at it in a small picture. If I want to get from here to here, it's going to take me 1.57 steps. If I want to get from there to there, it's going to take me another 1.57 steps. All of that together gives me 3.14 to get that far. Does that make sense? Now, if I want to work backwards and go the other way, the same thing's going to apply. I'm going to have another 1.57 to get to the bottom. And then another 1.57 to get to right here, which is going to give me 2 pi. So that means this up and down one right here this guy right here, if I want to find out how far it is from here to there, I'm going to take my 314 and add another 1.57. So how big does that give us? 4.71. Okay, so this guy's around 4.71. So now let's take a look at our object. We have our arrow. So we have our arrow right here. So our arrow is in between 314 and 4.71.
which one of those answers is between those two digits? Letter C, only letter C. Okay, 5.38, that's going to be way over here. Okay, that's going to be over here on this side. How do I know? Because it's going to be bigger than 4.71. Anything bigger than 4.71 is going to be over here. Okay, so that's how we're going to divide up. So on the very next part, if you've got a small spot, we're going to have 1.57, 3.14, 4.71, and a full term would be 2 pi, which is 6.28, okay? So this is all we need to know in terms of radians, okay? We don't need to understand the unit circle in terms of how do I change it now into pi? How do I change it here back and forth? We just need to know approximately how far something moved, okay? So let's take a look at the parts of it. So we're going to break up the parts of our periodic function. So first of all, sine waves are periodic functions. And what is a periodic function? It is a function whose graph repeats. That's the most important part here, is it repeats in regular intervals or cycles. So that means it repeats the same pattern, okay? That's super important. So it repeats the same pattern. Whatever the pattern may be, it repeats the same pattern. If it does not repeat the same pattern, it is not periodic. that down. The function whose graph repeats the same pattern. So regular intervals or cycles. Regular meaning equal. Okay, so it repeats the same pattern. And now we're going to talk about the different parts of our periodic function once you're ready. So we'll push pause now. So we're going to take a look at each part. So the first part of our function is amplitude. We want to take a look at amplitude. Okay, so amplitude is the distance from the midline to the max or min. Um, sort of. So the amplitude is from the middle of the graph to the top or middle of the graph to the bottom. It's that distance. So if that's what you want to write, that's fine. So distance from the midline to the top or midline to the bottom. Okay, middle to the top or middle to the bottom. And it's always a positive number. Okay, always a positive number. So the amplitude they're showing here in red is our midline. So the amplitude is from the mid to the top or from the mid to the bottom. So I could go from mid to bottom. That is also my A for amplitude. Okay. So amplitude, we've got a couple shown here. I could have amplitude there, mid to top, mid to bottom. I could do a mid to top over here. I could do a mid to bottom over here. Okay, that's what your amplitude is. Amplitude for problem solving is also known as the radius of a tire. Because we're going to be talking about water wheels and tires. And when we talk problem solving, the amplitude is the radius. So, a good way to remember it is amplitude starts with the letter A, radius has a letter A in it. Okay? So amplitude is the radius. Now we got to figure out everything else out about it. So we have a couple more things to talk about. The next one's called the midline. 
Now, the midline The midline is the horizontal line, boys, right this down, please. Don't be daisy. So the midline is the horizontal halfway between your max and your min. Okay, it's the horizontal line between your max and your min. So it cuts your graph in half horizontally. So it's halfway between the max and the min of any periodic function. Uh, no, it's not always the x-axis actually, because they can move it up. But what the midline does, it can be represented as an equation. It can be an equation, y equals a number. Now, if it's that equation with y equals a number, it will also be the y-intercept, which becomes the y-intercept, okay? So it's the halfway between the max and min, and it can be expressed as an equation with y equals that digit, it's a horizontal line, and it becomes your y-intercept, okay? So if it's on the x-axis, that means the y-intercept is zero. It's on the x-axis, y is zero. So we've got our amplitude, halfway to top, so middle to top, middle to bottom, and then we've got our midline that cuts our graph in half, okay? And there's going to be ways we can calculate these. The last definition we're going to look at is the period, which is the length of the interval where it completes one entire cycle, so one full revolution. So they could call it one cycle, one turn, a revolution, okay? It's one full circle it completes, so one full turn. Now, if I had a circle and I were to chop it, and if I had a lot of circles, because I'm showing the way this is going to be graphing, because really, wheels travel, right? And they go in circles. Well, if I were to take this, it looks like a big slinky. If I were to take that and expand it, you know, all it would look like is a bunch of waves but it came from circles. So this is going to end up being like this when I extend it. But what it starts looking like are all these circles. Okay? All those circles will extend to become one full wave graph. So when we get tires or a water wheel of water going round and round, pushing all those um, river boats down south on the Mississippi River, you got all those river boats and casino boats, lots of them down there. Okay? They, they deal with the principles of the water wheel and how it moves in the water. All right. So we've got a couple things that we remembered how to write down. So we've got our midline, the middle of our graph. We've got our amplitude, middle to top, middle to bottom. And then we got the period. That's how long it takes to make one cycle. So if I go back to my original diagram, I'm going to trace one full cycle. So one full cycle would be where it starts and then where it ends before it would start to repeat that same cycle. So you're going to have one maximum and you're going to have one minimum in one full cycle. Because if I were to chop this right here and if I were to fold this side over to that side, it would make me an oblong looking circle like this. It would be an oval. Okay, well all that is, is it's an oval that's going round and round and round like I showed you. <clears throat> and again, it is stretching out to be a wave pattern. Okay, and that's how actually it works. <clears throat> so now let's try and see if we can identify different periodic functions. 
So remember, if it's a periodic function, it's going to repeat the same pattern no matter what. Okay, and it could be a funny looking pattern, but it would re repeat the same ones. So let's take a look at these ones. So, do the following ones represent periodic functions? And it's a yes, no thing. Well, let's take a look at the guy on the left here. If I were to do one full cycle, so I'm going to trace one full cycle. So I'm over here, and I want to go until it repeats itself, and it's going to repeat itself up here. Then would I have the exact same cycle going on? But if, could I take this part right here, could I chop it off, and would it trace identically on top of the other one in green? Yes, it would. Okay, that's how you know it's a periodic function. Okay, it's repeating the exact same pattern. What about the one below it? Is this guy repeating the same pattern all the time? No. Okay, this guy is an ever-changing pattern that's going to, oh. So this guy is not a periodic function. So this guy was yes, this guy is no. Let's take a look over on the right-hand side. We got some shark teeth here. Are these ones doing the same pattern? Yes, this one is periodic. What about the middle guy here, the blue one? No, this guy is not repeating the same pattern. What about the bottom shark teeth? They look like Batman heads. Hey, you look like that. Yeah, Batman. We got a Batman. Yeah. Yes, it is periodic. Okay, same pattern. Now we're going to deal with these ones. <clears throat> All right. Are the ones on the top periodic? It's the very top graph periodic. No, it's not repeating itself, and they're all different. Okay, so this one is not periodic. What about the one on the bottom? Bottom left. Yes, yes he's periodic. What about the bottom right? Yes. yes. Good job, you guys. Okay. Here is the review of what we talked about. Other examples. Here we have a sawtooth, a square wave. This is a sinusoidal wave, and this is a cosine wave. Do you notice the differences are of the sine wave and cos wave? Do they look different? Do they look different? No. No, they don't look different. They look very similar, but there is one big difference. Okay, these guys look like flatter tops. That's just the actual picture, but they shouldn't. Yes? Um, no, they will be identical. What's different? Okay, what's your difference? Um, it does, but what we're looking for is the y intercept. Where does it start? This one should actually start at zero, zero. It should be kind of operating zero, zero there. This guy starts way above. He doesn't start at zero, zero. So that's the only difference between a sine and a cos graph. One starts at zero, zero, and the other guy doesn't. The other guy's just been slid over a little bit. That's all. But they will cover each other identically, and we're going to discover that coming up. So if we take a look at the next one, these are the key ideas we need to remember. If I want to find my period. There are multiple ways to find a period of any graph, guys, quiet, please, of any graph, you would take your max, find the x number, so here's my 450, find the, um, sorry, my other max, find my number, and now you're going to take max to max, subtract them. Or you take a min to min and subtract them. So, I would take 450 minus 90, that's going to give me my period. Over here, I've got my 1 coming down there, my 1 coming down there. So, this one's going to come down roughly at positive, well, positive 1, I think, down in there. Maybe not quite positive 1, 1 and a half. So, this guy right here is going to be between 8 and 1.5. That's his period. So, I would take my 8 and I would subtract the 1.5. That's my period. All that tells us is how long it takes the graph to make one full turn. So if that was a tire and you're driving your car, that would be how long it takes for your tire to turn one revolution on your tire, on your car. Okay? 
That's what this is. So again, like below, we can go max to a max, or I can go down here, I could go a min to a min and find my numbers and my period that way. So you can go max to max or min to min. Third way, the third way to find period is to trace it. So what I would do is I would take a highlighter and I would literally trace it until the graph repeats. So I'd start on my y-intercept and I'd trace, trace, keep tracing until it's going to start to repeat itself. That's going to tell me what my period is. So this guy here is telling me, oh, your period's six. How do you know your period six? Because that's where it would start to repeat again. Okay. What's that? You're, it's, it's, oh, it will always be, yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do we also notice about these sine waves? They're going to touch the x-axis multiple times. Okay. Now, can they move completely above the x-axis? You bet they can. Sometimes they won't touch the x-axis, and that's okay. But if it's a basic sine graph, it will. All right. That is the end of lesson 3.4.